Hi everybody and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans and I'm your weight loss coach, health strategist and internationally published author, helping take your life and your business, health, fitness, mindset and body from where you are right now to where it is that you truly want to be. Today I want to talk to you about the human experience. If nothing else that has COVID has taught us is the fact that the accumulation of just material things is really only gonna take you so far. During the peak of the global pandemic, you could have been the richest person on the planet, but if you certainly lived in my part of the world, you couldn't jump on your private jet, you couldn't go anywhere in your uh, boat, and you could drive up to five kilometers away from your home in your most expensive car in the world. You could have the fanciest clothes in the world, but you can't go out anywhere to wear them. You can have all of these fantastic things, but really, what do they really mean? If you can't use a lot of it, it really doesn't matter. And I, I, that's certainly something that's resonated with me through the peak of this crisis, knowing that, wow, it just goes to show you what a delicate world that we live in and how when we get to our last breath, whatever it is that we've accumulated, we can't take any of it with us. But maybe what we can take with us is what's living within us, within our soul, within our hearts, within our mind. Now, I'm not a religious person, uh, but I do like to think that I'm spiritual. And I'm not sure that it just ends when we, we pass away. But my point is, while we're living, I think that we can get a greater experience out of the humans that we interact with. And what I've learned from COVID is the power of relationships. And we're still in a lockdown here. I know in various parts of the world, people are either in lockdown, going into lockdown, coming out of lockdown, or maybe haven't been into lockdown for a while. But when we go into one, we realize just how important it is to stay connected with others. Because we've all got our own stuff. We've all got our own story. We've all got those mental battles that we have with ourselves, with others, how we cope in getting the best out of ourselves is an ongoing journey that we have. Me personally, I've worked out that I've conditioned myself to do the things that I need to do each day to look after myself physically, to look after my inner health, but also to look after my mental health. And I'm not going to run through what all of those things are now. You can go back and listen to a number of other podcasts where I, I talk about how I work out and uh, the food that I'm eating and supplementation and all of those kinds of things. But what I've also realised is that we need to have a great communication with ourselves. We need to be continuing to strive towards progressing every single day our lives towards something greater than where we are right now. And if we want to exponentially grow ourselves, we know that we cannot just do that on our own. If we want to grow at a much faster rate, we need to have a team around us. We need to have our coaches, we need to have our support team. You cannot do what we want to do just by yourself. And that means we've got to build these human experiences and we've got to build great human experiences. And what COVID has taught me is the fact that we have a lot of interactions with people every single day. But how many of those are really deeply connecting, meaningful ones. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go to the supermarket and have a deep and meaningful connecting relationship with the person that is uh, taking uh, your, your money for uh, the groceries. But what I'm talking about is those special people that you do have in your life, just how deeply are and meaningfully are you connecting with them? That could be your intimate partner, it could be with your children, it could be with uh, business partners. It could be with key employees. It could be uh, your friends and family. 
What I've realised is that the first lockdown taught me a whole bunch of things about my children. And about 13 years ago, when I decided to make the career change from a very busy corporate life into running my own business, one of my key reasons for doing that, despite being passionate about what it is that I do in my work and wanting to really make a, a more of a, a global impact on people rather than just what I was doing locally. One of the key things was to connect more deeply with my children so that by the time they got to become adults and as we continued our relationship as father, adult, daughters, that I was able to pass on as much of my knowledge, as much as my skill, as much of my uh, intellect from me to them so that they can have greater outcomes in their life. I mean, from the, the time that our children are born, we aren't raising kids, we're raising adults. And I realised during COVID that I really wasn't getting across enough of the things that were going on in their life. I realised that I was really uh, hands off with their schooling and the fact that we had to homeschool, as painful as it was, I really got an insight into what it was they were doing. Now, my mum and dad, they had no idea about really what I was doing at school. Um, as soon as the parent-teacher nights stopped, which I think they'd have one or two a year maybe, uh, they had no idea what was going on with my school. And I didn't really ask. They might say, have I got any homework and that kind of stuff. But that was, it was different, a different era. They just didn't show really any interest in what, I, what it is that I was doing. And they probably wouldn't be able to help either because I was studying things that they had no expertise in. So I wanted that to be different for me. And the kids are getting to an age where I can't always help them. But interestingly, uh, my eldest daughter, she was doing some maths just two days ago, actually. And she said, Dad, do you understand what this means? Now, uh, one of my better subjects was maths. And I looked at it, and one of the subjects I was quite good at was algebra. And she showed me, and even though it's been probably 30 or 40 years maybe since I looked at some of this stuff, I looked at it and I said, okay, yeah, I can see what it's doing. It's, this is what it is. This is how this formula works. And walked through about three or four examples and said, you know, does that make sense to you? This is what we're doing. Move the decimal place this way. And uh, it was interesting for me because it was like I've built this problem-solving ability and it doesn't matter what comes my way. There's a way that you can work it out. Now, there are some maths things that are just so complicated and science things that I'm just not... I never did science subjects. So I don't know them, but they're her mum... Uh, does so she can help in that regard but you, I built this problem solving ability to be able to know how to find the answers if you don't know what the answer is yourself but the, the whole purpose of giving you that illustration was I've been able to connect with knowing what it is that they're learning and understanding how their mind's working and how resilient they are in their problem solving ability and enabling me to have some different discussions with them and now I have deeper discussions with them. I'm having more discussions about other aspects of their life. Like Emily, she's 15 now, and I'm talking to her about boys and relationships and sex and drugs and all of those types of things to see, you know, where is she at with that in her life? And having open discussions about it. And I feel that's, that's part of my role. Now, I'm, obviously I'm using my kids here as an example. But it's also highlighted to me how you can build relationships even though you're not meeting face-to-face -face with people. Even though that somebody might be over in Los Angeles or New York or uh, Canada or another part of the world, how you can still build a relationship with somebody even though you're not standing there face-to-face -face with them. And so I think today's session here is about how do you make a deeper human experience with your key contacts that you have in your life and there may be those relationships where you just don't want to deepen the relationship it's just like an employee staff member type relationship and 
you know, you just want them to do the work. You, you don't want to get to know them on a, a deep level and, and that could be fine. But maybe there are a whole bunch of them where you should be connecting more deeply. And how do you do that? Well, it's got to come from the right place, right? You've got to want to deepen relationships. And I think you've, if you've learnt what I have from COVID, you'll understand that, well, gosh, one day this is all going to disappear for us. We live in a fragile time. You know, this is a, this time, it's a global pandemic. What's next? Does this continue to go for a number of years? Certainly it will in our country by the time we get everybody vaccinated. What's next? Is it another pandemic? Is it a financial crisis again? Is it a war? Is it some sort of world war that has devastating consequences? Is it a nuclear attack? Is it some really damaging solar impact? You know, some meteorological, um, you know, like a meteorite or, or something like that that has a dramatic impact on the way that we live, things that we just never thought would happen to us? Are they um, incredibly uh, massive weather events like tsunamis and, um, you know, those types of events that occur? Who knows what they are? But we live in a delicate place. And life is short. We don't know how much time we've got. So I think it's really powerful for us to reflect inwardly and say, okay, well, where are those relationships that we, that we would like to really strengthen? And maybe it's a relationship with yourself first, strengthening that. A lot of us have a lot of negative self-talk and maybe you need to reflect on that and say, well, why is that? Where does that come from? Why am I always so hard on myself and down on myself? And then just spread that like rings, circles outwards. Is it your, I would do your intimate partner next if you have one. Uh, then children, uh, family, friends, key colleagues, etc., etc. And just see where can you strengthen that. And maybe you do have that staff member that you, in the past, have not really cared about. They just come in and do their work. But just think about what's possibly going on in their work, in their life. One of my observations from looking at the highly successful teams in the world, in any sport, it's when the coach has been able to get the most out of the, each individual player. And when they get on that court or that field or whatever it is that they're competing on that platform, every single person is doing their absolute best, getting the best out of themselves. They may not be as good as each other, but they're bringing their individual best. And I have observed that it's the coaches that truly understand each player and truly understand what's going on in each other's lives or understanding in what's going in the player's mind and their life, that that's when the coach starts to bring out the best in that person. And if you think about your relationships and the role that each one has in your relationships, the same is true for that. If your kids are performing at their best because you understand everything about what's going on with them, well, you may not understand everything, maybe that's an exaggeration, but there's things that my kids don't tell me for sure. My, my youngest daughter's got a lot of challenges at the moment. I don't think she necessarily knows all the answers to what's going on, but she's certainly not communicating them. Uh, even if she does know. Uh, there's always going to be stuff that people maybe don't want to tell you, but if you can have a greater impact on what's going on for them and communicating around that, then chances are they're going to open up a little bit more, you'll build that bond and you'll, they'll be able to perform at their best. And then that, the same is true with your staff members, your business partners. It's coming from the right place though, not just because what's in this for me, but you're doing it because what's in it for them. And that I think is the, the real difference here. COVID has taught me that life is precious. 
we live on this fine edge of what we think is normal and having freedom and being able to do whatever we want, whenever we want, and just being having somebody make a decision that bang, shuts down what it is that you're doing in your business. Like my facility here is still closed and even though we open up for most of the state at 11.59 tonight, effectively from midnight tonight, what that means for us is that we have to remain shut for at least another week because somebody in government has made that decision that we are not allowed to open. It doesn't seem fair, but that's what the decision is. And who would have thought living in the 21st century that we live in a world where somebody can make a decision like that that has an impact on me to say that I can't open my facility? Who would have thought? Two years ago, you would have said, that's crazy, that's never going to happen. But here we are living in that place. So we have to find other ways in which to work with our people. And there's been tremendous opportunities that have come out as a result of being forced to do that. So strengthen your human relationships. You never know what, what gems are lying just beneath the surface by you genuinely coming from a better place to understand what's going on with people and to build stronger, deeper, more meaningful connections. There's a gift in this for you. There's a gift in this for them. If you want to connect with me, please go to the mental toughness and body show.com, opt in for a free consultation. Let's make 2021 your best year yet. See you tomorrow.